to, and 40 micro-publishers answered it. Um, and I just asked them questions about micro-publishing, and I, I put that uh, information into graphs like this. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a nerdy, techy zine, but if you're into that, you should check it out. So um, something I thought might be fun to do would be to share some of the data that I've collected through this project and then put those same questions to our panelists. Um, so that's what we'll do next, but first I want the panel to introduce themselves. If you could each just introduce yourself, say your name, your publishing company, and just give us a little um, information, like maybe where you're located, what kind of publications you put out, and how many you put out a year, that sort of thing. So I'm one half of 2D Cloud. I'm Justin Scarhus. Um, we're based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Rain can say the rest. Um, I'm Rain Hogan, uh, the other half, and uh, we've been, uh, yeah, putting out minis and perfect bound books uh, for a while, I guess. Yep. Since 2007, so almost about seven years. About seven years. Yep. Yeah. I'm Annie Koyama from Toronto. I run Koyama Press. Uh, I do about ten books a year, and I've just started incorporating a couple kids' ones a year now, within that ten. And uh, I've got more than 60 titles, but I also do art projects and, um, you know, street art stuff and fine art weird things as well. Uh, so I have, like, quite a variety of interests. So I, I feel it, it is all sort of connected since 2007. My name is Keenan Marshall Keller, and I do Drippy Bone Books. And uh, I self-publish and publish other people's works as well from Los Angeles. I'm, uh <laughs> okay, so um, I guess you guys answered, answered this already, but I wanted to talk about it a little. Um, one of the things that I found um, while trying to collect all this data about micropublishers is that a lot of them are really putting out pamphlet comics, um, whereas publishers like Fanacraphics and Drawn and Quarterly aren't really putting out those floppy comics anymore. I feel like micropublishers have really stepped up and taken the, that um, space in publishing where like something like Retrofit is putting out a lot of floppies, um, but they're independently published uh, floppies. So maybe you guys already answered this in your bio, but as you can see from the, the chart, um, from the 40 micropresses I surveyed, most of them do put out <laughs> mini comics, which I define as handmade, self-published, or rather handmade, independently published comics, floppies, which I define as like a typical newsstand comic, like, you know, Spider-Man, or an independently published comic that's in that format. Um, but then a, a significant portion also put out graphic novels. Um, and I feel like everyone already touched on that in their introduction. Okay, this might be a really kind of standard interview question, but um, it really interests me. Um, what is your biggest challenge as a micro-publisher? And the top two were distribution and funding, and shortly after that, marketing, um, time commitment, distracts from personal work, and then shipping slash storage and other. And something I found pretty interesting about this is a lot of those top challenges are tied up with getting your comics to your readers, which as a micro-publisher, I definitely would say that is a huge challenge. There's not a lot of avenues to um, get these independently published comics to, to readers. And, uh, and yeah, so finding the market or getting the comics to the market um, is pretty challenging. And then it seems like a tie uh, for second place is time commitment slash personal work, fitting that into your, fitting your micropress into your life, which I certainly agree that that is challenging. But I wanted to turn this question to the panel and, and say, ask what are your challenges? Does this line up 
or do you have some different challenges? So anybody who'd like to throw out an answer. I, I think for us, like uh, distribution and marketing are like some of the biggest problems. And I think they would probably, if they took, were taken care of, they could take care of everything else. Because uh, you'd have more time, you'd have more to do it, uh, because you'd be making more money. Um, so you could do it full time or something. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, distribution and funding are the two toughest things. Funding for me personally, because uh, I put everything on myself and pay for it, and you don't see the money back that quickly. And when you do smaller runs, you know, I'm not going to a place and printing thousands, so the cost per each is a lot higher. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, just getting the money to print something is the biggest challenge usually. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I have all those problems. <laughs> <laughs> I have a large distributor now, so I don't have that worry. However, the marketing thing, even should that happen to you, you are still having to market the same amount, um, be online as much as, you know, way more than you probably want to be. Um, there's no, you, you almost can't market too much. There's always a store or somebody who doesn't know about you. Uh, there's someone who will only order through Diamond, and so I have to reach out to them and encourage them to get it directly from the distributor, or there are other ways, and we can't get to every show. There's so many shows now. So it's never ending that way. I have a weird uh, challenge is that I love floppies. I grew up with them and that's all I did at first. But distributors, large ones, they won't take them. And so I'm trying now to go back to my roots and find a way whereby I can do it and not you know, go out of business because you don't make any, you basically cover your costs when you do them. And shipping costs have become so high, especially from Canada, that it's just, if you do the math, it's bad math to do it. Yeah. So that's a weird challenge that I have. Yeah, shipping shipping's yeah. a major problem okay. too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, you you ha you work with some people internationally, right? Um, uh, it's kind of a, a partnership. Yes, I have I have two partners who started Drippy Bone Books in 2007, mm -hmm. and I didn't join until 2010, mm -hmm. and I've kind of just taken it over. But mm -hmm. um, we all publish our own works in our separate cities. One lives in Denver, and one lives in Amsterdam, and uh, put them out under the umbrella of Drippy Bone Books. But they haven't put out anything in quite a long time, in a oh, couple okay. years. So I'm kind of the only one doing it at the moment. But okay. Okay, the next one: Where are your comics so sold? Um, so the 40 micro-publishers I asked, um, all but one of them said that they sold them at conventions, and the one who didn't, it's because he was more of an art zine publisher who sometimes puts out comics. Um, so yeah, we're all here trying to sell our comics. It seems like a lot of micro-presses, this is one of the main ways that we get our comics out. Um, also, a lot, most of them, almost 100% of the ones I surveyed are able to get them into comic shops. And then a lot of them, most of them had a website and we're selling them that way too. It seems like bookstores is the, the one area that um, comic micro-publishers are having trouble um, getting into. A smaller portion of the people I asked got their books in there. And so um, I just like to ask the same question to the, the panel. Um, where are you selling your comics? Are you selling them here? Are you selling them other other places? And and how is what are some of the challenges to that? Well, I, I think one of the challenges with like getting into even like comic book stores or retail is that uh, bookstores uh, it's difficult to keep track of like all the different uh, from the retailer perspective like all the different people selling you books to sell to your readership uh, or uh, customers and uh, so a lot of them won't carry you, you know, unless you have like some form of distribution, whether that's like, you know, Tony Shenton, uh, a spit and a half, or you have like a larger distributor like Diamond or a consortium. Um, so it's, uh, it's a gamble for the smaller shops to like, uh, to carry you and, and for bookstores and some of them just flat out won't. Yeah, they don't want to make 12 different separate orders to 
pick out 50 comics. I'd rather do that in one shot. So that's definitely a challenge of being micro presses, that kind of fragmented kind of approach. Well, also, the bigger bookstores, they take by page count. So they won't even look at some titles that are not 100 pages. Wow. Well, so much of the stuff I love is not 100 pages. And, and you can't, you know, you're not going to stretch something yeah. that's not naturally 100 pages. So, mm. But then you're penalized for that. So that's a weird thing that you don't, until you get into the bigger distro stuff, you don't know those secret rules. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Man, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> yeah. I like to do it at conventions because I like meeting people and looking them in the eye and having them give me direct feedback. Um, but I get in, I have an, I have work in some stores, but it's mostly like seven to twelve really loyal places that take everything I do, and then occasionally a pop up store here and there will want one title only, but not not my entire catalog. So uh, conventions is usually. Uh, if not just selling directly to people, I can also meet stores at conventions and meet people that own comic book shops and sell to them here. So that's usually how I do it. Um, yeah, I, I sell the majority of my stuff uh, online. And that's how I do it for the small print. Through small distributors like you mentioned, um, Sony Shen and um, Bound Force Media. And there's a new, um, I don't know if you guys work with them, uh, I think it's Orbital, Orbital Books here in the UK. There's Impossible. 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 Yeah. But yeah. Oh yeah, but the store. They do the online. Yeah. Impossible books. Um, and they've started ordering in you know, they'll give me an order every three months and they get a ton of stuff. Uh, and I'll split the, the shipping because that's the, the biggest challenge with them yeah. to the UK. And then they will distribute it in, you know, through the UK and I that's imagine killer. through Europe and stuff. So it's uh, okay. Um, while we're on this, um Chuck, you do subscriptions, or I don't know if you'd call them subscriptions or bundles, or if it's sort of the same thing. Um, yeah, yeah. And does, how, how does that go for you? Like, and maybe you can actually even explain what that means. Yeah, well, I actually don't do either one anymore, but mm -hmm. I, when I started, I did subscriptions, which I did for about a year and a half. So I kind of put myself on a crazy plan of releasing five uh, comics a month. <laughs> 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 And now I'm just sort of scaling back because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm burning out the exclusive <laughs> And uh, I guess just as a follow-up question, I would be curious to know of the ways we've talked about selling your comics, which is the most successful? Which, how are you making the most money? Is it, is it through conventions? Is it through comic shops? Is it through your website? Conventions and online for us. A little bit of everything for me. It also would depend on how you pay your artists and uh, what kind of royalties you pay out. Um, I have always worked a little bit um, not traditionally, and at first I gave all the proceeds to the artists because that's how I started my company. But now, of course, I have overhead, and so um, you know the book sales from bookstores are really important. Uh, like you said, it's nicest to go to shows and see who's actually buying them. Uh, we get wonderful retailers who've been supportive from day one for me. Those small shops <coughs> that buy your stuff, it's, it's work. It's lots of paperwork for them to do it. And, but they have helped me grow to what I am today. So that kind of thing is wonderful. It's hard. I've never sold online, though. It, it, yeah, probably the only publisher that you may have heard of who's never done it. <laughs> I, until last year, did everything myself. And there's only so many hours in a day. And I don't sleep a lot. <laughs> so I didn't have time to be schlepping to the post office every day as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't get much uh, internet orders because I don't get much traffic through our website or our mm -hmm. store that much. So it's mostly conventions and stores. And it's the stores that carry it that where people then see it then might go to our site actually and might then look, me, look us up and get our stuff. So, but it's the supportive stores that keeps me doing it. You know, Because I go to conventions till I'm blue in the face and sell it directly. But the fact that when I'm at home doing my real job, there's still a place where they're being sold that has nothing to do with me directly. You know, that, that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think online sales for me are, uh, are the biggest thing uh, to sell books. Um, and 
I've, I've recently sort of scaled back my convention just because uh, I, I noticed I was spending so much money traveling and paying for tabletops, and oftentimes it's just a crapshoot whether or not I'll uh, make back that money. You know? <laughs> And I guess if I was to do the survey again, and I, and I do want to do it again and do a report like this for 2014, probably one of the, question, one of the choices should have been um, Kickstarter or some um, fundraising website. And I'm not sure that anybody on this panel has used that. Have, has anybody used anything like, like Kickstarter? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. And uh, so how was that for you? Uh, we raised the money to... <laughs> <laughs> it, so worked. it worked. It worked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, was, it was a lot of work. I mean, it's super stressful, like uh, probably one of the most stressful experiences ever. Oh, yeah. Um, for some of them, for some of them. Mm -hmm. like, uh, so you've like, done a few? Yeah, we've done four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm interested in doing it for certain projects, but like certain ones, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's a, powerful platform and uh, but yeah you have to it's your full job your full-time job uh, for that those 30 days or whatever it is uh, that unless you uh, already have like a, a giant uh, social following that wants to give you money um, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of work mm -hmm. so and even then depending on how much money you want for whatever project but it's interesting I don't know. Do, do you plan to finance do you plan like get, get a Kickstarter um, besides the Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. It, absolutely. It's like got its own built-in marketing just by being a Kickstarter. It gets seen no, it's so cool. much. And yeah. it's, I know a lot of artists that self-publish their stuff using Kickstarter, and it, it only helped them. You know, yep. you yep. might get some negative feedback from people that might want to judge by using a, fund, a crowdfunding source, right. but it definitely got their name out there farther than they've ever gotten it. So. Yep, yep. No, it, it, I mean, it's really uh, unique in that, yeah, it's, it's like raising your profile for the project, and like, cause I know like, for example, when we did Little Heart, like we did that, uh, I mean, around the time that the Kickstarter was going like, uh, and shortly thereafter, it was like, that was the marketing campaign. And that's, that's where, uh, you know, we had a lot of sales then, but soon as, soon as that time, like uh, we weren't using it for a couple, after a couple shows, it was like sales just dough. Yeah. It, like it was just like done. And since we don't have uh, proper distribution and, and uh, we're still trying to figure dedicated out. Dedicated marketing. Yeah, dedicated <laughs> marketing. It's like, yeah, it's, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of, it's, it's really stressful in the way of like, usually it kind of starts out really well. Like you get a kind of a surge of orders and then it just dips kind of slowly through like the middle and then it kind of like surges up at the end. So it's just like this kind of roller coaster of, uh, I don't know, just a process and it's just, yeah, very, I don't know. Stressful yeah, in that yeah. way. So I thought I was going to have a heart attack. If you have other means to raise <laughs> money, uh, I would suggest it, but it is helpful and does definitely get your name out there and, and the book out there, so it has its benefits. Yeah, and it's, and it's a great lesson to like try to like different things. It helps you know? it forces you to kind of get better, get better at marketing, too. Yep. Kind of yep. that's just like in a really short period of time. Yeah. So. Okay, so we were talking about um, distributors before, but let's talk about them again. Um, so, of the 40 uh, micropresses that I surveyed, these were the distri top distributors that they used. Um, and as you can see, these are, except for Diamond, uh, these, are pr these are like, and I'm not sure about Impossible Books, but I'm pretty sure Impossible Books is like an independent distributor. Um, these are um, independent distributors, often, no, no, not, not Amazon in last guess, <laughs> but um, like Birdcage Bottom, Spit and a Half, Tony Shenton. Um, those are like one person, endeavors. Um, and th that's often what is available to a very small publisher. Um, you have to reach a, a certain level like, like Annie has and like Uncivilized Books has to where you have um, large commercial international bookstore distribution. Um, but to most of us, um, these independent distributors are, are what's available. And I was, I was kind of surprised that Tony Shenton was, was still leading um, the pack. Uh, but, it, but yeah, most of um, most of the micropresses I surveyed, they did have a distributor used Tony, and um, then, they, then there was the, the other section. There was just a lot of tiny distributors that I had never heard of. If it got less than two votes, then I put it in the other <laughs> section because there's just too many to put in a, in a graph. 
Um, but a significant portion of the, the microbursts I surveyed have no distribution. Um, then you see diamond, spit and a half, birdcage bottom, um, impossible, which is in the UK, and last gasp. And, and some, some micro publishers are selling on Amazon. I'm not sure how they do that. I'd like to learn how. Um, but I guess um, I, I, I'll just put this again to the panel. Um, which of these do you use? Which, which, are, which are working? And is there a distribution method here that, that, um, or that isn't here that you're using? Um, I guess I guess for us like we're using uh, a couple different things, but it's like uh, yeah, like we, some of our last gasp carries some of our books. I have no idea how well they're doing. Um, <laughs> consistent theme, I think. Yeah, it is a pretty consistent theme. I've heard from other people. Yeah, uh, spit and a half. Like they carry some of our books too, um, and we used to work with Tony Shen. Um, we decided to try to. I guess uh, schlep some of our own weirder stuff ourselves, um, and I don't know how great that's going, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's probably all that we use. So. Uh, through my distributor, I have Amazon. Um, I use Tony Shenton for Elias and for stores, and also for my floppies that the, the uh, distributor won't sell. I use Fit and a Half. Impossible in the UK, last oh, gasp. Yeah, yeah we use yeah. them as well. Yeah. Well, most of them. Diamond for some of the books. They won't take all of my books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, don't get, that's a whole other panel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You could say they created us. Yeah. <laughs> Diamond yeah. created us. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. I, I, think, I think that's true. I mean, when you started off the panel, uh, I think when it's like a few years ago and they, they set those new cutoff limits, yeah. um, those which I really like. small presses will never print that many in a oh. run. Yeah. Even yeah. should they reprint, they will never print that many. So to put it in perspective, 2,500 is huge for That's many of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, John uh, carries some of my stuff, Spit and a Half, you know, just a few titles. And Last Gasp, I have some of my comics uh, rotting away in their wa warehouse uh, someplace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but mostly I do all my own distribution because yeah. my costs are so high and having to give somebody a cut of something that takes a cut when they mm -hmm. give it to a store is just impossible for me. So I directly make uh, relationships with stores and try to cultivate those and make sure they always have my books. So. And when you sell it, do you sell your books directly to stores or is it consignment? Cause yeah, uh, well, um, it depends on the store, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, most of them are consignment, uh, but they're really good at like printed matters. Carried everything I've put out and pays me like on like constantly every three months. I get a check and they always are asking for more. And uh, Quimby's, they yeah, it's like most of it is consignment. So I have to give them the books, wait a couple months, and then get the money back. Okay, how do you print your comics? Um, so I'm sorry if these questions are a little techie, but I, I find that. Um, Probably a lot of you are kind of interested in this because maybe you want to do it too. So I, I wanted to share some information that might be useful. Um, so photocopy or digital printing, that was, that was definitely the leader. Um, but offset printing is followed closely behind it. Um, Rezograph uh, um, obviously has been growing a lot in the last year. And um, then screen printing is the smallest, but still, you know, still people doing it. Um, so again, I'll put it to the panel. And if there's anything um, that's not here that you use to print your comics, please share. Yeah, I think we probably use all of those. Um, mostly, I guess, offset and, um, digital. and digital, a little bit of uh, RISO. Uh, I don't know that we've done too much screen printing. Like, I'm trying to think maybe just the covers of some things in the past, but that's, yeah pretty low for us. We have almost all offset and a little bit of screen printing for covers and some a little bit of letterpress, not um, risograph, although I'd love to. And I don't like digital printing in general, so no thank you. And <laughs> do you, do you, and this, I guess this question goes to everybody. I, I'm curious, I'm seeing more 
and more like self-publishers and small publishers um, having their books printed um, overseas. And, and that's, that seems really interesting to me. I'd be wondering if anybody on this panel does that. I do most of mine and it's purely a cost thing. I don't, yeah. I don't like to do it. I've tried to do it. I did find a printer in Canada and honestly they didn't do a great job. So I will go back. Um, there's a good US one that I want to check out actually in your town. Uh, yeah. yeah, but so I don't love to do it, but it, the cost differential is it's really hard to ignore. If you're yeah. little, you have to save money wherever you can. <laughs> it's most important for me to get the book out and get the artist out to you. And so it's something, you know, can I sleep doing it? Yeah, I hope one day I'll be able to tell you I don't send it <laughs> over. <laughs> no, honestly, yeah, it bothers me personally, and I don't always want to do it, but it's something has to change. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't think people in China are going to be paid more any day soon. <laughs> so it's a dilemma if you care about that stuff. So as much as I can to make up for it, I can use, you know, FSC paper and you can, you yeah. can still be somewhat ethical yeah. and do it. So, you know, in a perfect world, uh, of course I wouldn't do it and that would be my choice. But then do I want to make two books a year? No, I actually I don't. And then mm -hmm. you won't know about half the people here. So it's, it's, yeah, it's hard. And did you guys want to add something? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree 100%. Like, we're also doing the same. It's just like you have, like, the math to make this work is, like, insane. Like, uh, just, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, you have to, like, sell a book, like, so many times because everyone's taking a cut. And then you also have to, like, make your money back and, you know, pay your artist. So, like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just absurd. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we had held out pretty much till this year, right? Yep overseas I mean just we were, we were opposed for for a lot of reasons that you mentioned Annie so mm -hmm. but yeah it's just if we're gonna be sustainable we have to find ways to do that and that's a big huge part of you know being sustainable is cutting costs so I I have a friend who prints all my stuff in India in Indianapolis so uh, and it's a place that just does like uh, Chinese food menus and banners for businesses <laughs> so I'm the only books that get printed there at all and it's all digital printing and it's all like grossly bright and overly colored and sat like really ugly digital printing but i i enjoy that with the artists i work yeah and the artists i work with it like really helps their work so um but yeah it's it's still insanely expensive you know <laughs> if i was taking it a little more seriously i probably would be also getting my books done overseas but i have a hookup right now so i milk it as much as possible um, I mean, I do most So I wanted to give the, um, the audience a chance to ask the panel any questions of them. I, oh, good, we have a lot of them. <laughs> OK. Um, for the, the gentleman here. You, yes. <laughs> depends on how much you're printing for yeah, one. If you're yeah. doing a large number, then it's always probably going to be more cost effective to use a company. But if you're doing small numbers, you can do it out of your house and it'll be way cheaper. You won't have shipping, you won't have any, you'll be able to look and make sure you're not going to get a box of fuck ups, you know, like if a box arrives with your books and the covers on backwards or something and they did all of them already, you know, that's not going to happen if you're doing them yourself, so. Unless you do it yourself that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and for me personally, like, putting out other people's work. It was just like an extension of my friendship with artists uh, and myself as an artist. You know, I like I run a gallery before. I, I like 
getting people to see other people's work. And especially if I like somebody's work, I feel like it's other people's duty to try to spread it out there. So I try to help them by getting them seen, even if it's only like 300 pairs of eyeballs, you know, it helps. Um, I, uh, to answer that, that main thing with John, so the way my thing started, I started doing this uh, comic book at the end of the fucking world, which was, um, came out in uh, a very small format, dollar a book, uh, 12 pages, and I started to do it monthly, and I just, uh, I sort of fell in love with that serialization idea, and, and, and it was just gaining momentum, and I just started to ask friends, I said, hey, do you want to do something? There is the, the time, it's like you, the time commitment um, that can be pretty difficult. Um, Chuck, I'm pretty sure that Oily is your full-time, well, Oily and your cartooning is your, your full-time job, and I think that has something to do with why you were able to publish 120 comics in two years, <laughs> um, where you might not, and I'll not only publish, but print those, print those in your, in your house. Um, and not, you, you might not be able to fit that into your life. So there you, always, you also have to consider, um, is it worth it for me to just send this file to a printer and wait a couple of days and get a box of 300 copies than to like, spool this through my laser printer for a couple of hours? Um, at least that's my feeling. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't mind my numbing work of like <laughs> putting together a bunch of zines or comics, then yeah, you do it yourself. But if you hate that, then don't do it. It'll only drive you mad. Um, sure. How do you come to an agreement with the artist about how you're going to pay them? Uh, what does that look like? Hey, I want to publish your work. Okay. <laughs> you can't pay me, sir. I mean, I have, I have no idea how to do it. Um, for me, it is, it's such a low stakes that there's not much money being made. So what I do is I don't, I don't have contracts or anything. I just say I'll, you know, I give them a bunch of books that they can sell themselves. Which is not a lot of money, but it's the, the way that I, it works for me. Um, and uh, and I hope, I, yeah, I, I hope they. I think I think I've been able to introduce um, some younger artists to to eyeballs that would not see them if I hadn't printed them. So I feel like uh, that helps me sleep at night. I wish I could give them so much money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I pay my artists in copies. Uh, there's really no money to be made, and these artists are usually friends or people that have come to me wanting to be on the the, the label, so uh, I pay 20% uh, of the run that I make, I give them in comics, so then they can go and make money on that, depending on how much, then they can charge more or less. They can undercut my price, I don't care, they can sell it for whatever they want, so that's how we, I deal with it. If I could pay them, I would, but yeah, there's no money. <laughs> yeah. I have the traditional uh, advance and royalty thing, but I've always wanted to be more artist friendly than some of the bigger companies, so I give my artists a ton of copies and I take them to shows. You take them to shows and you, you, I, you get them there? You I finance them yeah, getting yeah. to shows and also sending them to international things. Uh, where I'm from in Canada, you can get grants to travel artists only within the country. Uh, so, but most of the shows I want to come to are in this country, and so it, it's out of uh, my pocket. So, you know, if I stop doing that, yeah, I make a lot more on books, but it's not what my company's about. So, it, every company's different. You're an angel in heaven. <laughs> 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 yes. Or insane. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know, I think it's like really difficult figuring out like what works for you, like uh, as a label, like, I mean, you just try different things, and uh, uh, hopefully you can find either that the math will work one way better for you, or uh, I don't know, like, we've, we've tried paying, uh, we've tried a number of different things, like 50% of net, and like, um, just, uh, yeah, 
giving copies, uh, like uh, when we were first starting. We've done some advances. Yep, yeah. yep. It's 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 a struggle to figure out like what works and what will actually be like sustainable. Like, and it's it's uh, worth figuring out because it, it'd be great. I think if you're able to be sustainable, you'll obviously be able to support your artists better too. So. I yeah, I was kind of surprised that um. To hear about hear so many people, not Annie, of course, but so many of you others, to say that you give royalties. That must take a lot of bookkeeping, which I I just can never keep up with that stuff. Yeah, is that's it? pretty much the biggest thing I do for our label is tracking sales. It's kind of insane, and when it comes totally time insane. we pay artists on a quarterly basis, it definitely eats up a good probably week, week and a half worth of time when I'm not working my day job. So. Um, it's definitely a lot of tracking of sales. And it, can, it comes from so many different sources, and we have different arrangements can we've had with artists over time, which is part of the problem is that they're not standardized <laughs> contracts. So it's like, oh, this artist gets this cut, or oh, this went, went through, okay, some of the sales were at a show, some were through distro, some were consignment, and they're all different percentages, so it gets, the math gets a little fun. fun. Yeah, we'll just call it fun. <laughs> yeah, j uh, just for myself, because like I, that bookkeeping is so hard, I, I, I give, my artists a kind of lump sum, which is not huge, but like um, I give them that up front and then again pay them in copies. Like they might get 100 copies of their book or 75 copies of their book, which um, retail, you know, that's, that's pretty valuable. Um, okay, another, any more questions? You could email us, you could mail us a copy. We have our address on our site. Um, I definitely would suggest something that's either finished or very close to it. Um, something that's in its early stages is probably not as valuable for, for us to look at. Uh, I'd say also like look at the, look at the publisher Absolutely. and make sure that your work would be something that they'd put out because you know it's you, 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 I get stuff sent to me, and it just it doesn't make any sense, you know. Sometimes, so, um, but yeah, email is probably the best way. And or, or even at a convention, you can come up and talk to somebody. But usually at a convention, I'm busy, you know, doing stuff, so it's kind of a hard time to try to talk to somebody about possible future things. So, email would be best usually. Um, my best advice. Would Also, yeah, and put your yes, name on absolutely. it. Put yeah. your name oh on God. your Tumblr. That's where <laughs> I find stuff. I don't actually take submissions because I only do 10 books a year, so I'm booked till 2017. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I look at the odd thing, but I find people on my own. But please, I do look at your Tumblrs and stuff late at night, and if I can't, after a couple tries, figure out who you are or how to contact you, you I'm may just have done. just missed out on doing a book with me. Yeah. It's happened. So, and I put this plea out on Twitter, you know, a couple times a year. I'm old. Put your name on it. <laughs> I, I don't care. I can't find you if you're, you know, a some ghost. groovy name. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I've um, on working on on this. I've I've come across the, the same problem where I'm trying to like list. I'm trying to create this like master list of all the micro publishers, and I go to the website and it's like, how? Who is this? Where's the name? Where's an email? Like. Like it's a mystery, um, so I I, I, sh I share that frustration. <laughs> um, I think we have time for maybe yeah for one one or maybe more, two more. The woman in purple. I was wondering if you could recommend some printers that you've worked with in the past and what people work with that if you want to get a couple hundred copies, where would you go? Well, if you want to do magic wrapping, <laughs> <you can> email me. <laughs> 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 That's actually something I'm. I'm Some cities locally have like artist communes and stuff that'll have machines that you can go and pay a very minimal fee and print stuff by yourself. That means you're hand folding, binding, cutting, but that's, that's a really good option if you don't have your own 
uh, publisher already lined up. And there's places like, I mean, they're, they get expensive, like 1984 in, in the Bay Area, and there's, there's, if you just research it, you'll be able to find at least four or five, and then you can start doing pricing and see which one would work better for you. But uh, doing it yourself, I mean, Kinko's is still an option too, always. Try and yeah. get in at a local um, community college or university. Yeah. Uh, you know, they often have programs whereby if you're interested in learning, you can go and do that and it's free yeah. once you're in there and then it's way more satisfying to put your own thing together. And even if you only do half of it and then get somebody to bind it, you know, it's still mostly done by you. So mm -hmm. there's nothing better than that. <laughs> also cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I rarely do full color, but when I do, I, I think Rob recommended the New York color copy. Color in New York? It's a best best value copy. Best value copy somewhere there, yeah. And uh, it's super cheap, especially for getting a, a lot of copies. And they ship it right to your door. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the way I, uh, my micropress operates is like if, if you, if you want to offset publish, you know, offset print something, you pretty much have to print a thousand copies of it, which means you probably need at least a thousand dollars sitting around, and I never do. Like, I just don't have that in my bank account, so that's why I use a digital printer, because I can print 50 copies at once, and, and um, I found that don't go to Kinko's unless you, it's, you have to. It's, it's, a, it's really expensive. Like, the, the cheapest way to do it is to find an online um, printer, like, best value copy is what I use, or something like it, where it's like three cents per black and white copy. You send them a file, you wait a couple of days, you get it in the mail. You gotta wait, that's, that's what kind of, that's the inconvenience of it, but like, if you're printing yourself digitally, um, I haven't been able to find a shop, a, like a brick and mortar shop that you can walk into that's cheaper than what you can find online where you just upload a PDF. And, and, and what about 2D Cloud? Oh, for for, 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 printing. For, for shorter run stuff? Or, or just start just anything. Oh, uh, I mean, like, we've yeah, done a, a bunch of different stuff, but, uh, like, uh, in Minneapolis, Zach's always got his own press, and uh, he also has uh, his own uh, risograph machine, and uh, so we've used that. Um, we've also, there's a digital printer in St. Paul that we use called Peak Printing, and for smaller run stuff, we've used them. Um, for offset, we've worked with, like, a bunch of different places. Um, it's all like West Can, right? Yep, West Can. Um, like that and Gun in Michigan. Michigan. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, what is the one in Minnesota? The Bang Printing. Bang Printing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, MCRL and uh, uh, Print Ninja. Um, Damn, you use a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we've used Kinkos too, like when we were first starting, like used Kinkos and then like used our own printers to print the cover and like bought our own paper and I mean I don't know, we've done all kinds of all kinds of stuff. Okay, so I think we have time for one more quick question. Um, how about you, sir? Um, what does VR look like? The future continuing to exist. Yeah, 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 making things sustainable for all of us. Yeah. It's hard to shipping prices are the biggest challenge. I think yeah. that's gonna kill us before anything else. It's tough. And and you, you, you have no control of it. Uniquely, is like a Canadian, like, is it? Well, I think the U.S. prices went up a they, lot they just, this year They also. just upped priority, so, yeah. like, last it's week. It's very tough how so. to get your stuff out there. Uh, yeah, we've, we've had up our prices multiple times on shipping, just because mm -hmm. otherwise we're, like, losing money on shipping books to people otherwise, mm -hmm. so. Which you just can't do. Yeah. <laughs> and Beyond is just trying to, yeah, keep doing it as long as I can, you know. That's basically what I'm trying to do. And try to work with the same artists I'm already working with while trying to drop in a few new ones, you know, every year, so. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll keep doing it as long as it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forget who said it, but someone used the word sustainable, and that's the word I use too for my own micro-publishing. I just, I'm trying to kind of create this self um, this, this machine that's just keeping f forward, like everything's fe feeding the next project, and that's enough for me. Um, and that seems like a pretty good goal if you're thinking of doing this yourself. Okay, well, I think that's our time. Thanks so much for Thank coming. Thank Thank you. You. Thanks. Thanks to our panel.